What's going on, guys? I'm Bear DeGidio, and this is another episode of the Journey Podcast. And I'm here with the one and only one of the most famous drummers in the world right now, Rook of Machine Gun Kelly. Let's go, baby. Now, yeah. Rook is obviously off to a hot start this year with today, officially their newest album becoming the number one album in the world. And it's amazing to see his his progress in the band and, and Machine Gun Kelly kind of taking the world by storm with this uh, new genre of punk that they're kind of coining and becoming like the prince of, of, of punk rock, I would say, with Machine Gun Kelly. But Rook, I've known for years. Uh, there's yeah. been some some amazing stories I've had with you over the last couple of years. <laughs> and we really met and we've talked over the years. And I met him through a good friend of mine, uh, Sheckler and a bunch of those guys. Yeah. So it's always been fun watching their journey. Rook, why don't you start us off? with kind of explaining to everybody how you met Kells, the famous audition story with Slim, and kind of give us a in, in, an inside look on like how you became part of this Machine Gun Kelly movement. Yeah, so um, I was sitting in high school. I was like 17 years old. It was my last year. I was a senior. And um, my phone was ringing in my pocket. I'm like, man, who the hell would be calling me right now in class? Like, and I Hold on, you were in class? Yeah, I was how in class. How old were you? 17. Oh, you were in 17, high school. Yeah, high school. High oh, school. you were still hollering oh, at cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheerleading. No. All right, I so, just want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 17, still in high school, like last class of the day. My phone's ringing. I'm like, damn, who the hell's calling me? Like, and I like pull my phone out of my pocket and it says Slim MGK. I was like, oh, I jumped right up out of my seat and just walked out of my classroom and answered the phone. Teacher's like, bro, what the hell are you doing? Like, I'm like, I'm answering this phone call is what I'm doing. <laughs> You're like, this is the moment. Yeah. Like, okay. What you have, a, a, ra- a razor, a oh, sidekick? Dude, I don't even know what the hell. A fucking, some piece of shit phone. A cricket, cricket. Yeah, Shout cricket. out to cricket. Well, Not a sponsor, yeah, but we cricket. should get Why? them on here. Jesus yeah. Christ. So they hit you? Oh, yeah. Hit me. So I answered the phone. He's like, yeah, man, uh, any chance you'd come to Cleveland? I'm from Toledo. Toledo's like two hours from Cleveland in Ohio. And uh, he's like, yeah, man, can you, you think you could come down and try out today? I'm like, yeah. 100% for sure. I'm, I had no I fucking idea how I was going to get there. I didn't have a license. I wasn't driving or nothing. Still don't, but um, that's like Rockstar life. Beside the fact. Um, and uh, I called my uncle. I'm like, hey, man, like, I need you to take me to Cleveland to like try out for MGK. He's like, all right, fuck it. Like, let's do it. I'll, I'll pick you up. We'll pick the drums up and we'll be out. Went on the way. Got pulled over on the way there. My uncle had a bunch of weed on him to give to MGK. <laughs> And he ate the weed in the fucking cop car with a canine dog in the cop car while the cop was questioning me at the other car. <laughs> right? So we're like at the exit. I'm like, no fucking way, dude. I'm like, I'm so close to this right now. There's no way. God, like, What's going through your mind when you see your uncle eat weed as a canine cop car? Well, I didn't know he had you. a bunch of weed on him. And like, I didn't even smoke at the time. So I didn't give a fuck. Like, he, he's like. He He's like, like, we're really going to make sure you get this spot. We got pulled over and I'm like, dude, what's the big deal? Like, it, I mean, we should be all right. He's like, nah, like, what you mean? Nah. He's like, ah, yeah, I got a bunch of weed on me. I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? No way. Like, we're right here at the exit. Like, no way is this getting taken from me right now. So what happened? They fucking took him, put him in the cop car behind us. And they questioned <laughs> me outside of our car. And while he was in the car and they were questioning me, he ate the fucking weed in the car with the dog. <laughs> so, okay, so being cool, we got let go. <laughs> just to kind of put this together, Rook's on his way to an audition with MGK. You get pulled over at the exit. Your uncle eats the weed because the cop has a canine dog. Yes. That like smells for weed. <laughs> Your uncle eats the, the weed. The dog's going fucking nuts, by the oh, way. Oh, he like, knows you guys are rolling. I can hear the dog in the car going fucking crazy. And Chameleon the only reason they're not tripping is because they're talking to me. Quite trying to get Okay. Something. So what yeah. happened then? So end up getting let go. They don't find the weed. He ate all the fucking weed. We get in the car. Get there. We pull up and then like, all these MTV cameras like run out of this house. We pull up. Like, I'm like, I think this is the address. Like these people start running out. And there's all these big ass cameras and shit. And we're like. I look at my uncle and he like looks at me and we're just like, dude, what the fuck is going on? They're like, roll the window down, roll the window down. They're tapping on the window and shit. We roll the windows down. They're like, yeah, man, we're with uh, MTV. We're going to need you to sign these release forms. All this shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Sign the forms, go inside. First thing Kel says, he jumps out of his closet with a lightsaber and swings. And he thinks that my uncle is the drummer. He's like thinking he's never seen me before because Slim was like the one who set it up. So, so Obi Wan Kenobi's your uncle. Walked in first, and he jumps out of this closet and like tries to do like this like funny thing and like swings a lightsaber. At my uncle, my uncle's like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? 
Like, <laughs> yeah, Obi Wan yeah, Kenobi yeah, joke. Yeah. So like, he's like, yeah. They're like, he's like, oh yeah, this is him. Kels looks. He's like, looking at me, and he looks at his manager. He goes, "This is the guy." And I'm just like. You're just yeah. 17 being stared at by the whole room. Hey, <laughs> yeah, here I am. He's like, I mean, all right, I guess, man. But set your drums up in the basement, dude. Like, all right, I get my drums out the car. Set my drums up in the basement. It's all these people from MTV and like him and like four of his homies and like Irv, who's like his A and R at the time, and like they're all just like staring at me. It's like completely silent in the room. I'm just I sit down and I'm looking at everyone, and he's like, Yeah, man, like uh, I. I don't know, like, play something. Like, all right. <laughs> just just go at it? I'm like, all right, so I just went off. I just started fucking playing a bunch of shit, and he's like, all right, all right, like, stop. He's like, all right, I'm going to give you a couple more songs, you know, play to, like, play to a couple of these tracks. Play to a couple of the tracks, and, like, they look at Irv, which is, like, the A&R and shit, and he's just like, I mean, shit, let's give yeah, this kid a shot. Good. Like, yeah, fuck it, like, let's run it, like, He's like, all right, man, well, we got a show tomorrow. Can you be there? I'm like, I mean, I, yeah, I could come, like, but I don't, like, I live in Toledo. Like, it's a two-hour drive. I don't know if I can get all the way back here again tomorrow. He's like, oh, man, you can just crash in my crib. I'm like, all right, like. 17-year-old, like, let's do it. there. Played the show. The show went great. It was fucking sold out. It was an insane fucking craziness. And it was in Michigan at this spot called The Blind Pig. Never forget it. Afterwards, they were like, yeah, man, uh, great job. Yeah, can you play tomorrow, too? We got another show tomorrow. I was like, uh, shit, yeah, I guess so. They're like, yeah, man, you can just travel with us. It'll be cool. I'm like, all right. Show gets done. They're like, yeah, man, good show. Uh, so we got another show tomorrow. Uh, what do you got going? <laughs> you can do tomorrow, too? I'm like, yeah. And then, like, I just never, ever went back to high school. That was it. I just been with them ever since then. Wow. So <laughs> drop out of high school, become the official drummer for Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly, tour with him. Uh, you know, fast forward today, you guys have two back to back number one albums. Yeah. A lot of people look at you guys and they say, OK, well, Machine Gun Kelly's new to punk rock and he's new to this and he's new to that. I see a lot of these headlines. I've known Kells and Machine Gun Kelly. I've known all of you guys slim for a minute, for yeah. years. You guys aren't new to this. You guys are true to this. You guys have been doing this. You were on the Warp Tour. You guys had a lot of this already instilled in you. This is who you guys were. You were always going against the grain. Why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like transitioning from Warp Tour out of that into where you guys are today? So, I mean, like, I mean, the Warp Tour shit was, I mean, it was also like a great era. Like, that was a great time to be like a part of that Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. period. You know, like, that was like a, you know, a great thing. Cause I mean, that Warp Tour is not even here anymore. Yeah. But like, you know, I think it's just, it's, it's more or less like funny because people are just like, oh yeah, man, it's kind of, kind of random. You know, you just went from like rap to, to, to rock. It's like, nah, like if you came to our fucking shows for the past 10 yeah, years, yeah. you would know and you would see that it was already a rock show. We just made hip hop music. You know like you guys was, already had a, a, a song like the Wild Boy song, right, which was right. going nuts, but which was that punk live, rock vibe. It was fucking loud ass drums and guitars and bass and everything it's like it's not a hip-hop record anymore it's when you come to the show now it's a fucking show it's a rock show yeah it's it's interesting it's always to me. been that we, like, when we were just the biggest in hip-hop at wild, wild boy at its peak was it was a fucking rock show regardless you come to see wild boy it was a fucking th- however many people Jump in and fucking mosh pit. And yeah, it was, a it was fucking, nuts. It was drums. It was guitar. It was all rock shit. Like, yeah. it was, if you were there, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, for me, when I first met you guys, you know, I remember meeting you uh, in Dana Point. I was with Shex. Yeah, and Sheckler, uh, this was years ago. And I remember watching you guys walk up from your tour bus that was parked. And I see Machine Gun Kelly and you I see the tour bus Slim. up to the beach. You the pull the People tour bus like, up to the, the beach. Fuck is this? Everybody, all, all these older uh, <laughs> Orange County people are like, who is this crew? You guys all walk out. You have the XX chains. You have bandanas. You guys are all wearing black. You look like just a posse. And I'm like, okay, I love these guys. I love the camaraderie. I love the energy. You guys were always so humble, but at the same time, you guys knew who you guys were going to be. You you guys had a collective crew between Slim and, and Baze and all you guys. And you guys just kind of had this understanding, you know, like I, I also was friends with Dingo at the time. Still am great guy. And he used to hype you guys 
eyes up to everybody. Oh, I love and so like you guys always had this mystique about you. Like you guys didn't care what was going on around you. It was more about like, this is our family. This is our crew. That's yeah. what attracted me. I remember I pulled you aside at the rocks when we were eating, everybody was drinking. I don't drink. And I was like, I'm gonna go get some food. And I went to the, to the campsite next to us. It was getting hot dogs. I was like, come with me. I'll get you food too. You remember that? <laughs> yes. And I don't know. I talked to you that day. what did I tell you that day? You're like, Hey man, you guys are doing some different shit, man. I think you guys are going to be one of the biggest one day. I'm just like, I hope so. I was, and, I and, hope. and then that night, some beach band was playing. Yeah. I went up and stole the mic. I'm like, yo, we got Machine Gun Kelly here. And everybody's like, no, no, no. And I was like, no, just sing a song for everybody. He's like, no, no, no. I was like, all right, I tried. But uh, I always remember that about you guys. You guys had this such great collective energy between all your friends. And that's something yeah. that a lot of people can't duplicate. A lot of people can't imitate. Most people don't have. Now, explain that family atmosphere, like going into this, like, Cleveland based concert festival that you guys decided to throw that you guys have like how did you guys turn this like wild boy house of blues tour to this huge festival in Cleveland so basically like I mean obviously like our fan base is a very like loyal like cult kind of following so anything that we do as especially like in or around Ohio is always going to be like the biggest for us because you know that's where we're all from so like but as far as the festival I mean dude it started out like you know, basic, like, all right, man, we're going to fucking try this festival. It started out, you know, it was probably like, I don't know, probably like 5,000 people. What was the name of it? At the first EST Fest. EST. So what does EST, that stand for? EST is like everyone stands together. That's like Got our, it. like, Got our it. shit. Got so, it. And everyone's always asked, like, what's the double X mean? Like double X, we call it. This is like our family crest. Got it. So like our, because our, also like our group is like EST 19XX. It's like our. Got it. Shit. So, but yeah, dude, I mean. Um, we, we started the EST Fest shit and it just, dude, every year it just got bigger and bigger. I mean, we were outgrowing the places that we were doing it at. They're like, yo man, like there's just too many people. Like we can't. Yeah. It was it like a no Woodstock more. in Ohio. Yeah, it is, Who yeah. did you guys have perform at these things or was it I just mean, Kells? Machine no, no, Gun no, Kelly? It was multiple people. And we had multiple genres performing. It was like rock bands, rap, fucking reggae. Like we had mm -hmm. every type of fucking like genre all the time. It was never like. We're going to a hip hop festival. Yeah. It's like, nah, like you're going to go there and you get what you get. Like you, there's fucking rock bands. There's fucking, there was metal band. We dude, we had fucking suicide silence plan at our shit. People, there's people there ain't never heard a metal song in their entire life. They're like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh my God. It was like, amazing. Yeah. You guys great. literally were throwing awesome. your own like, concert. Like, yeah. Dude, their guitar player jumped off an amp into the drum kit and people were just like, Oh my fucking god! I've never seen nothing like this before. Like I grew up on rock shit, so I see yeah. shit like that. But when you're a kid that like maybe grows up on reggae or just rap, you yeah. know what I mean? You don't get to see that shit. Like no. you come there, they see that shit, and they're like, they leave there and they tell their friends, they're like, dude, I just saw some shit this weekend. Like, no, you, know, you like, guys you were got, known for that. And they can And people, we make it such a dope experience that people have no choice but to be like, dude, I gotta come back to see what they do next year. Like, what, what was it that made you kept being like, bigger? How did it like, keep going, growing bigger? We started bigger? adding food trucks. We started Got adding, it. like, specific events. We started doing, like, so it's all camping. So we would do, like, who has the, the dopest campsite? Who has the best food at their campsite? Like, events. We started, we would, well, we started building this big-ass metal dome, and we'd have DJs play there, and it would go till fucking 5 in the morning. We'd show up there and just fucking rage out all night and, like, just stuff. We just kept adding more and more shit. The bigger it got, the bigger the artists we could start getting because we had a bigger budget. So like it just it grew consistently. I mean, I mean, do we haven't even done it since the pandemic? This next EST Fest is by far gonna be the biggest one we've ever had. Ever. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you guys have always also stayed very true to who you guys are yeah. in terms of like this crew, this crew being very unique, very tight knit. You, you're friends with guys like Matt from Avenged Sevenfold, M Shadows. Yeah. You're friends with guys like Ryan Sheckler, like famous world's famous skateboarders. And like you guys have always had this unique crew around you of influential creatives and people. Yeah. What's helped you the most guide to where you as personal as like the drummer and like the band to get to where you guys are today? How did you guys arrive to where this like new album is? is and where you guys are sitting musically i mean honestly my brother man like kells is he's just a great artist he's a great his work ethic is like unmatched you know like, like there's something that i really 
am like inspired by about him is like he's like one of the hardest working people I've ever seen in he my wants entire it. life. And I know a lot of people who work their ass off. So like he just he doesn't stop. Like he'll get done doing the biggest show ever in front of a hundred thousand people and be like, oh, all right, cool, that was tight. So like uh, what are we gonna what are we gonna do now? And people are like, bro, you it's a hundred thousand people. He don't like, care. Like, he don't he look back. Care. Like, like he's like, nah, like, what are we doing? Like, what's next? Like, and that drive all the time is like that's why we're where we're at is what I believe. I mean, obviously it's a team, it's a collective, mm-hmm. but like his drive also drives the team. So like that is why I feel like we're so successful because his drive is just like I mean it's unmatched. Now in terms of this like punk rock vibe that you guys are in right now and like his new album and then the songs like that 5150 yeah. song is I know is one of your favorite off his new album what's it like with this collaborative effect because a lot of people probably wonder you know respectfully Travis Barker is probably the greatest drummer we know yeah you know in today's modern era and he's he's been one of the most like musically like relevant style like transitioned into multiple genre yeah. artists that we've ever seen blink 182 being one of the greatest ever and then continuously yeah. finding new talent he's now working with machine gun kelly how does that work with you as well being you know machine gun kelly's drummer well you know like i so i have been Kel's drummer for at least i mean since 2012 now so um i mean i do everything with him a lot but so when he brought travis in like travis is more than just like a drummer he's a great producer and like you said i mean he played from one of the biggest if not the greatest pop punk band that there is you know like i would say without a doubt that's the greatest i mean there's like who's big you know what i mean like they're the guy so like he has the formula he has the ear he like it's it's more than like just drums and like i had to learn a lot from him in that way as well because i just was always like focused on being like a great live drummer Mm -hmm. how do i look like how does it yeah, you, know, you look like, like a rock star. The whole thing, and it, but like, there's just more to it. Like when you come when you come to studio and like to to making records, there's just a different approach to that. And like, I learn light years of shit from him, and just watching how he like maneuvers around a song, or like why this doesn't fit there. Or like radio's not gonna like that sound. We shouldn't use that so much in this one because it'll work. Yeah. Back. Like yeah. things that you would never think about. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, damn, I never even thought about that. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with now with you guys doing these massive and tours, he's a great guy. Like Travis is like one of the coolest guys ever. He's like he's been nothing but respectful. Like, yeah, I see that too super from out the outside in. Humble, like he's just so cool, man. He's always reaches out, like always is very like, yo, man, like how are you doing? Like you know, like just like he's just a great guy. Yeah, and it's cool to see that you have the maturity as an artist to also recognize that most people would run and you're actually going at it. I mean, it says a lot about yourself as well, especially with the position Machine Gun Kelly put you in saying like, listen, this is what we're going to do for the better of all of us. And it's going to make you better as a person, better as an artist. I mean, it's one of the coolest things. And like once I said, once again, I'm saying like you guys have this unique friendship and family that you guys can operate like that. Yeah. You guys just got back from one of the craziest tours I've ever seen. South America, 100,000 people in the crowd going absolutely berserk. It looked like Woodstock. I mean, you're going nuts. You were sending me videos on Instagram. I've never seen you guys perform in a crowd this big. You guys were composed. Your music looked phenomenal. But you also had this air about you where it's like, okay, this is now Machine Gun Kelly's time. It, it really felt like you guys are the, the hit. Yeah. And this is where you guys are at. How was that tour? What was that like? I mean, like you said, I I mean, we've, we've played a lot of big fucking shows, but this was like that intro starts and you're just looking out there and there's a a person as far as you can fucking see. I mean, there's no end to the crowd. You're like, it's in that moment and that time, like when you just worked for so many years and like, even if it's 5,000 people or Mm -hmm. 500 Mm -hmm. or 15, you're like, damn, like When's it going to be like a big one though? Like when's it going to be like, and these are like, I mean, this is the time. Like this is like, the, the, we're the biggest we've ever been. We're the most popular that we've ever been. We've had two number one albums now. And it's just going, I'm, I mean, you're in real time. You're yeah, just yeah, watching yeah. the incline. I mean, your fans like, love constantly. you guys. I mean, it, it just, and, and I mean, even South America, we've been, we've been wanting to go there for years and we've had fans there messaging us literally for years being like, please come here, please come here. We just never had the opportunity. 
now we had the opportunity where we're over we're headlining like Lollapalooza festival these are big fucking festivals it's 100,000 people a day like there's no yeah like, it's nuts and I know you guys were also touring because uh, the Foo Fighters were on your tour yeah, yeah. and I know recently we had you know um, something that's probably been super traumatic for you and yeah. I mean, one of the best drummers ever, yeah. you know, passing away, Taylor, of the Foo Fighters. And I know you were close with him, but I remember the Foo Fighters were supposed to go watch you guys one night on tour, right? Yeah, so we were just, we were going to do a show in Paraguay together. They were doing a lot of the same festivals with us, but there was one day that we were playing on the same day together. Got it. And Dave Grohl had hit Kells up and was like, hey man, me and Taylor are going to come watch the show tonight. We got up early. Went to sound check, set up a whole like rack of speakers on the side of the stage so they could fucking hear this shit loud. Like we were like, just, we're like, hell yeah, bro. The fucking Foo Fighters are coming to watch tonight. Like we're about to fucking smash out today. And uh, <clears throat> the show ended up getting fucking rained out. And uh, Dave Grohl had hit Kells and was just like, hey man, like sucks, but like, fuck it. Come to our hotel. We got the top of the bar, like run it out. Just come over here and hang out. We're like, fuck it. We all, the whole band, we just yeah. loaded up and went over there. Hung out. I got to talk to Taylor, and I, I I ran into Taylor a couple times, like throughout life. We had played some other sh- shows together, but we never really like had a conversation. And um, this was like the first time we, we actually like had a conversation. Yeah. Coolest dude ever. Like such a good fucking guy. Like he he made sure that he like went out of his way to like say hi to everybody. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. like too cool. He wasn't like I'm fucking. Like, yeah. You know, like. I mean, five, could be, yeah, the Foo like, Fighters are yeah, huge. He just, you know, like they're the arguably like the biggest band in the world. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah. like what? It's the fucking, they're the guys. So, yeah. And like, he came up to me. I, I'll never forget this. The last thing that Taylor ever said to me was, "I'm so mad I didn't get to see you play today, but it's all good. There'll be another time. There'll be another chance." Crazy. And that was the last thing he ever said. To me. And then two days later. He, so crazy it's crazy how life works like that and these are guys i'm sure you and looked up to i was so angry that day because it was such a like happy and like bad day for me i was like so happy because we were like able to have that experience and yeah, be there and yeah. hang out but i was just like damn man like i really just wanted them to see us play today i really just wanted their honest opinion on, and i wanted yeah. them to just to just give me that, you know, mm-hmm. like that was, cause you know, like everyone said like, bro, like they're the arguably the biggest. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, doesn't I mean, get much what, bigger. What cooler people could you want response to like what you're doing? Like, you know, like I wanted, like, what if he had something to say? What if there was like, yeah, it doesn't get much bigger you than know, that. Yeah. I just it's like, crazy I how was life just, like, throws I was that. so mad that I was like, damn, I really just wanted it to happen today. And, and for some weird reason, I felt like there wasn't going to be another chance. When he said that, I was like, yeah, but like, nah, today was the fucking, today was the chance. Like, yeah. that was it. It was yeah. easy. You didn't have to travel nowhere. All you had to do was show up. Your stage was right next to our, it's like, it was so set yeah. up. I saw you guys like, perform in front of man, the like, hotel that night. Yeah. And you guys performed with all the crowd there and you guys brought out a speaker and, you know, Slim and Kells and everybody, Machine Gun Kelly is in, interacting with the fans yeah. and you're there going nuts. And like, you could tell the energy that night was like the city wanted to see yeah. you and you guys were wanted. And it was like, it gave me that sense of realization. Like, man, these guys are really doing it. They're becoming rock stars, yeah. you know? And you obviously growing up in this music space with your dad being in music, who is someone that you looked up to as a rock star that's kind of helped you pave the way in terms of like where you want to go, like setting that goal, that realistic expectation, that bar, like I want to be like that. My favorite drummer growing up my whole life was Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee is my fucking boy. I love Tommy to this day. Coolest fucking dude ever. Uh, actually, Tommy Lee was the drummer for the Motley Crue. Motley Crue, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, I taught Machine Gun Kelly how to play Tommy Lee in the dirt. And so no like, way. Yeah, yeah. So like Wait, when, what? Say that again. Yeah, I taught MGK how to play drums as Tommy Lee in the dirt. So the Netflix show that Machine yes. Gun Kelly is Tommy Lee in the yeah, show. You I ta- taught him all that. Yeah. Is that why he looks so good? I mean, yeah. yeah. Is that why he's throwing <laughs> sticks? Is that why? So he got he got the role to be Tommy Lee in the Netflix series, The yeah. Dirt, the movie, yeah. which showcases the life of like the Motley crew. Yeah. Did you already know Tommy Lee before that show? No, no, no. So, so we had... We knew him and we had like met him a couple of times just because Kells had like 
was mm-hmm. he, you know they had talk every once in a while and like we had a couple shows in the same area so he'd be like oh come to the fucking show we would show up and like dude was the coolest dude ever he'd fucking be like yeah man come backstage you fuck go in his dressing room there's like fucking massive ass sub speakers and you just you can hear his fucking just bass thumping from his fucking room from a mile around the arena like I'm like damn where the fuck's that music they're like oh that's Tommy's dressing room <laughs> we're like what the fuck's going on you go in there, he's got all this shit laid out. We were fucking putting on his eyeliner, just wiling the fuck out. I was, we were drinking, we do doing whatever the fuck. Okay. And yeah. then a couple years go by, Kells gets the role for the dirt. I teach him how to be Tommy. And so Kells is like, yo, man, I got to go over to Tommy's house and just ask him a couple questions. Like if there's anything specific he wants me to do, like playing him as a, you know, as an actor, you want to come? I'm like, yeah, I want to fucking come. What the yeah, fuck? like, hello. Yeah, let's go. Like, <laughs> no wait, no line. Let me write in. Tommy, just the coolest dude ever, man. He gets out, comes out the house. He's like, what the fuck? Oh my god, gives you a big ass hug. Like he's just the coolest dude ever. Like he's just a I cool ass guy. And mm-hmm. like, I'll never forget. He said, "Cause Kels was like, is there anything like you want Rook to show me, like specifically, like drumming wise or anything?" And he was like, "Ah, man, he's a badass drummer. I don't think I really need to say anything." And I was just like. Holy shit! Like this coming is the from the guy you looked up. I had a poster on my wall of was this guy. And he Looking up to this guy yeah. your whole life. Yeah, it's funny yeah, how life yeah, puts you in these yeah, situations. Yeah. I mean, that's what they say, right? Like if you can manifest to a certain level of an extent and like see where you want to be in life, life puts you in that position yeah. because you attract what you want. And it's like you have to sometimes have that realization. Like I'm gonna get there. You have to know how you want to get there, but most importantly, you have to have steps to get you there. And it's yeah. like, you put yourself in that position to constantly work, you know, talent without work is, is useless. Yeah. And it's like, you guys are constantly working, constantly touring. You guys are strictly business. You guys have never sold out now going into this next stage. What is something that we can expect from you and machine gun Kelly and the band on this next tour that you guys just sold out Madison square garden. <laughs> Two days back to back first day sold the fuck out. I mean, there, and there was a time they wanted us to play at Madison Square Garden. It was sold out. It was like a big ass radio show. And they were like, yeah, man, we're going to have you guys get up there. But just so you know, like, it's not going to be any like real instruments being played. And we're like, what are you, what are you talking about? They're like, well, you're going to be like miming. Basically, like, we're going to just play the track, and but none of your instruments are going to be like plugged in or live. We're like, nah. <laughs> We're you guys are like, it. no, we're not doing that. Like, we're not, we're not cool with that. They're like, all right, well, we don't know what to tell you. Like, that's it's either that way or no way. And we're like, all right, well, then we're not playing. We didn't play. It was sold out. Madison Square Garden. I'll never forget looking around and they're like, damn, like we're really not gonna play. Like, fuck, this is crazy. Like, we're at Madison fucking Square Garden. It's sold out. Like, it was. A and you didn't play. Zillion people there. No, we declined. Wow. We let Kel- we let Kels perform. We were just like, yo, man, just go out and just do you you know what i mean like and you know he's still gonna perform regardless but as far as the band we're just like yo like we're not gonna fuck we're not no fakers we play our shit for real we don't need a fake shit we're not gonna we're especially not gonna fake it for the first time playing madison square garden yeah and like we had a group a band decision we were all looked at each other and we were like yeah man like nah fuck that so like, crazy we'll, we'll be back sometime we don't know when but we'll be back just proves and to the now fact. Now we're back. Just proves Two the fact. Nights, sold the fuck out. Back to back. I can't wait. No, you guys are going to crush it. And once again, it yeah. just proves the fact that you guys have always been who you guys say you want to be. And you guys have always stayed true to that. This is always an amazing sit down. It's so crazy to get an inside look at this lifestyle that you've you know, come to live machine gun Kelly, where he's out with all his amazing success. We always knew he was going to be a star slim, your whole team, the XXX guys. I'm Bear to GDO. This is the journey podcast. And this is the one and only Rook.